Before we get into this video, I wanted to take a second to let you know that on March 11th, we're going to have a free in-person conference here in Los Angeles, California. You can ask questions in person and be able to meet Dr. Scholes and Dr. Moyad and our faculty, as well as other patients going through a similar journey. It's gonna be an incredible event. If you would like to sign up, you can click the link in the description box below and it'll give you all the information you need. Now here's our video on clinical trials with Dr. Scholes. So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about clinical trials in prostate cancer. I think that many patients hear about a clinical trial and a lot of times maybe we think of it as late stage and that's after chemo or sometimes we don't even understand what it is. There's stage, there's phase one through three. What does this mean? So first of all, what is a clinical trial? So clinical trials are where uh, it's science where humans or patients participate in uh, comparative exposure to different treatments to try and determine if one outcome is better than another. Uh, those are the best clinical trials. There's certainly trials, scientific trials in animals and in petri dishes, which um, usually are pretty far removed from the day-to-day -day decision making that we have to make in, uh, in the oncology world. So clinical trials are designed to help us understand what the best treatment is, and the best treatment uh, is usually compared to a standard treatment. So if we have a new treatment, uh, a pill that uh, kills off prostate cancer, does that pill work better than the other existing pills that we already have? And the best clinical trials, they administer them to patients in a blinded fashion. So the doctors and the patients don't know if they're getting uh, the new medicine or the old medicine. And then patients are watched over a period of time to determine an endpoint, uh, cure rates, survival rates, uh, disappearance of uh, symptoms, uh, some sort of concrete endpoint. And if pill B gives better outcome than pill A, then that's how we determine the optimal therapy. Well, I think when we talk about clinical trials, we have to talk about it from uh, what uh, the goal is, is to benefit science, participate in a clinical trial, and, and expand knowledge about what works and what doesn't work. Or is it to uh, achieve access as a patient to a medication, a new medicine, that people think might be superior but is not yet uh, on the market? And therefore, the only way to get it is to participate in a clinical trial. So I think the underlying goals uh, for the patients are to first ferret out uh, a substance that uh, they think will be helpful and then find out where, where that would that be through a early or intermediate stage clinical trial uh, that uh, would allow them access to a new medicine that is not available on the market in the marketplace. So we have phase one, phase two, phase three. What are those? So the phase one trials are when they have a brand new medicine and they don't know, because it's so new, they don't know what the proper dosage. Should they give five milligrams or 100 milligrams? Uh, will that be effective? Will it have toxicity? So phase one, they'll start with five milligrams and then they'll treat another patient with 10 milligrams and another patient with 20 milligrams. And at the point where they start seeing side effects, they determine that that is the maximum dose. So that's how they figure out what the proper dose is, just trial and error in a slowly escalating manner. That's a phase one. Phase two, after they've figured out what the right dosage is, is to go and administer the same medicine at proper dosages to um, say 20 people and see if there's any regression of cancer. Does this thing actually work? That's a phase two trial. And phase two trials are often the most desirable for patients that are looking to uh, find something helpful in, let's say their other options have been running out. Uh, phase two trials are attractive because everyone gets the medicine and they get the medicine at the proper dosage. If you're in a phase one trial, then you kind of have to hope that maybe you're towards the end where you're getting enough of it because when they just start off a phase one trial, they start at low doses and it probably won't be effective. The phase three trials are once they find out that the, the proper dose is in phase one, then they find out that it really does have an action against the cancer in phase two. Phase three is then to show, is this pill, is this new medication better than existing pills? If it's not better than existing pills, or maybe it's as good as existing pills. These are the sorts of things that the FDA is going to require for approval for it to get into the marketplace. How does one find a good clinical trial? Well, I think the, uh, it's an awareness, probably through your physician, of 
new medicines that look promising. Uh, I don't think one wants to just look for a clinical trial. I think uh, if a person has advanced cancers, let's say their chemotherapy has stopped working and they're looking for access to a hopeful new agent, their treating oncologist should be aware of what some of the hopeful things are uh, that are under research uh, conditions right now. And uh, then you can just do an online search and find out where that particular medicine is available. So for those in maybe a community setting, maybe their oncologist or the doctor that they're working with isn't as up to date, the research that they do online when they go to clinicaltrial.gov, what would make it, um, what are certain factors in a clinical trial that would make it reasonable for a patient to look at? Is it geographically close enough to home? Uh, is it is it a phase two trial where you know that you're got 100% chance that you will get the, the medicine in the proper dose? Well, those would probably be the, the number one and number two things that I'd be looking at. It's just, is it, a practic is it close enough to home to where I can travel back and forth to this location? And, uh, and do they have the, uh, the actual medicine where I can be assured that I will be receiving that medicine? Are clinical trials something that you should be looking at when you're more in the advanced category, or should patients who are in intermediate risk prostate cancer, exactly at what point should you start researching? I think you should start researching when you hear what the doctors are telling you and you don't like what you hear. If they are uh, saying we're out of options, well, we better go looking for options. If they are telling you that you need to have some sort of surgery and there's a significant likelihood of impotence or incontinence as a result, let's look for better options. Uh, maybe a focal therapy, a clinical trial and a focal therapy. Clinical trials are really to try and fit in where standard of care, it doesn't seem to be meeting your expectations. So since clinical trials are really comparing to see if which one's better and dosage and all of that, what happens when you have a clear winner? Do you have to do a clinical trial in order to start using it? The FDA will set up clinical trials to even to prove the obvious. Uh, I think a good example are these uh, PSMA PET scans that we have now that are such a big breakthrough. We don't need clinical trials to know that they are superior to the old uh, scans. It's obvious to anyone that's worked with them. But for governmental and regulatory reasons, they still have to do clinical trials. And there are other implications as well, because now that we can find uh, metastatic disease much more accurately, we don't have to be um, taking as heavy precautions against the possibility of me metastatic disease with long-term hormone therapy. And it's going to take a long time for those clinical trials to demonstrate that if you have a clear PSMA PET scan, you don't need to take 18 to 24 months of Lupron. In the meantime, I think common sense tells us that if you have a uh, scan showing no metastatic disease that we don't want to take 18 to 24 months of Lupron, maybe a shorter course or even skipping the Lupron. This, uh, uh, I think, is a good example of how uh, clinical trials may be demanded for a change in management. But in the meantime, since those trials will take many years to accomplish, we have to use our own common sense realizing that these technological breakthroughs are so powerful that there really isn't much ambiguity about how those studies, when they are performed, will turn out. People who ha don't have metastasis are not going to do a whole lot better by giving them long-term hormone therapy, whereas in those that have proven metastasis, they certainly need long-term hormone therapy. One thing that's come up when I've in my career when I've watched patients go on clinical trials, especially from these big academic centers, I'm wondering if you have any comments on this, is sometimes I think patients are put in clinical trials that may be good for the greater outcome or the greater good, but maybe not for the individual patient and their specific prostate cancer. Do you have any comments on that, of things that patients should watch for so that if they are with a big academic center, that they're making sure that their quality of life and their care is being prioritized? I think you make the point very well. Academia has a job to do, and they need to find volunteers to go into clinical trials. And their priority, prioritization of the patient's ultimate good will be somewhat diminished by their own eagerness and their own needs to get their clinical trials completed. Patients do need to always be asking themselves, how is this particular medicine, how is this particular protocol helping me? Is this really better than what other opportunities are out there? I have seen one mistake that patients make, and that is that if it's in a clinical trial or it's new, that it must be better. That's not necessarily the case. If they knew it was better, then the clinical trial wouldn't be necessary. So they're trying to find out if it's better. 
And sometimes there's other products that are already on the market that are known to be very effective. Uh, so typically, it's in a patient's best interest to use the FDA-approved medications that have already been through the trial process, and only when those things stop working, consider going on to a clinical trial. As I was sitting here filming this video with Dr. Scholz, I was reminded of all the patients I know who have been on clinical trials. A lot of them were metastatic, Gleason 9 or 10, and they got access to a medication they wouldn't normally get access to. So it is a good option, and I've seen some really great outcomes, especially when it comes to remissions. I think the thing that I want to remind you about is even if you're not at a stage where you need a clinical trial now, first of all, it's good to know that they're out there, and it's good to know that people are researching, and it's it's a good option to have in your arsenal when it comes to this journey. I think another thing to remember is even when you're choosing a clinical trial, it's important to still hold quality of life as important and make sure it's customized to what your priorities are. It's important to know that your quality of life matters even in what you would consider a more serious situation like looking at a clinical trial. It's always good to be aware of these updates and PCRI is here to help you do that. If you would like more information about your individual case, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and you can talk to one of our helpline facilitators. They're there to answer your questions. Also, please remember we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and if you would like to partner with us and donate, these videos are going out for free all around the world. We're extremely excited to do that, and we love partnering with you to do so. And honestly, it's an honor to do this. We really appreciate that you trust us. Please remember you're not alone. Uh, we're here with you, we stand with you, we know that this journey is not easy, and we want to help as much as we can. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment section below this video, and I hope you have a great week.